In today's video, we'll look at the 1973 Mount Gambier accident, which is well known among cave divers all over the world. On May 26, 1973, John Beckerman, Peter Burr, Larry Reynolds, Gordon Roberts, Robert Smith, and the three Millard siblings, Christine Millett, Glenn Millett, and Stephen Millett, all arrived in Mount Gambier, South Australia, with one goal in mind, to dive the shaft. Nobody could have predicted the horrors that were about to unfold. With that out of the way, let's get into today's tragic story about eight divers who dared to test the shaft's dark, bottomless tunnels. If you want to learn more about the world of cave diving and stay up to date with our latest videos, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. The deadly shaft was discovered completely by chance in 1938, when a perplexed farmer inquired as to why his horse had suddenly tripped up in an empty field. He discovered a small patch of ground about a foot across that had given way to a sinkhole that went much deeper than anyone could test without the proper equipment. As word of the shaft spread, curious divers traveled long distances to see what all the fuss was about. In the mid-1960s, a local diver descended 69 feet into the massive clear water cave through the now three-foot wide opening. The main chamber is 460 feet deep and 263 feet wide at its narrowest point. Because the entry point is approximately 20 feet below ground level, divers and their equipment had to be carefully lowered into the water from above. A rock pile lies directly beneath the opening, with two dark tunnels descending from both sides. One faces northwest and descends 260 feet, while the other faces east and descends 407 feet. The group decided to do a practice dive in the shaft a day after arriving on the 27th, tracing the guideline around 150 feet to the rock pile below. They quickly scanned the pile before returning to the surface to prepare for the main dive the following day. On May 28, 1973, the divers arrived, excited to explore the cave. Soon after, they lowered themselves on the guideline they had prepared the day before. In a personal statement, Robert Smith stated that they planned to go no further than the edge of the rock pile, specifically avoiding both tunnels adjacent to the rock bar. To go beyond the rock pile, experienced divers know that a special blend of gases in your tank is required to avoid nitrogen narcosis. Nitrogen narcosis is a drowsy state caused by breathing higher pressure nitrogen. This produces an effect similar to alcohol intoxication in the diver. The deeper you go, the more severe the effects, which significantly impair your cognitive and bodily functions, leading to drowning and death in several cases. At 180 feet, Robert began to feel the effects of nitrogen narcosis. With his knowledge of its effect, Robert signaled to the group that he was going to swim back to the top of the rock pile while the rest of the group continued exploring. Robert waited patiently, swimming around the top of the rock pile. Glenn Millett would then return and inform Robert that he is out of air. Robert and Glenn dashed back to the surface where Larry Reynolds was already waiting for them. Peter Burroughs emerged minutes later, his oxygen tank completely empty. Glenn strapped on a spare tank and went in search of the other four divers who remained in the cave. When he arrived about 230 feet below the surface, he found his brother Stephen Millett's lights and camera, but he couldn't see more than 12 inches in front of his mask. From the group's initial descent, the entire area around him had silted up. Glenn would do his best to find them, but it was nearly impossible under the current circumstances. He was defeated and realized he needed to return to the surface to save his own life. Robert Smith joined him but was unable to continue past the 225-foot drop due to the onset of nitrogen narcosis symptoms. At this point in the rescue, the survivors realized that their friends and family were no longer alive. They knew it would be a body recovery from this point on. The police sent a dive team down around 200 feet the next day, but they couldn't find anyone. It took almost a year of grueling effort to recover the bodies of Stephen Millett, Christine Millett, Gordon Roberts, and John Beckerman from the shaft where they lost their lives. Almost eight months passed before the first body was discovered, and the other three remained hidden in the depths of the shaft until they were eventually recovered through eight separate dives and the use of light equipment. The victims were found at depths ranging from 50 feet to 190 feet below the surface, and it is believed that they encountered nitrogen narcosis while exploring a tunnel darkened by silt, causing them to unknowingly descend deeper into danger. This tragic event was the only known fatality in the shaft, and it prompted the creation of safety measures to protect cave divers. It serves as yet another cautionary tale of the risks that can accompany diving adventure. 
We'd like to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons as well as the bell icon to be notified when we post another tragic cave incident.